Remember, we're trying to work backwards from the product and ask, how did we make this? Well, we probably made this out of this. And how did we make the organocuprate? Well, we probably made the organocuprate. In fact, we know we made the organocuprate out of an alkyl lithium. How do we know that? Because that's the only way we know to make an organocuprate. So we know that this must have been the starting material for that. Here, the number three is attached to the copper. And here, it's attached to the lithium. By the way, what do you have to add to this alkyl lithium to make it into the organocuprate? Copper. How do we know? Because we memorized it. OK. So we just have that uh, memorized uh, over here. All right, so then we have to keep moving backwards and ask, what did we make this out of? Uh, the alkyl lithium, a halogen halo alkane plus two. We are where the ally was. <laughs> a, halo, <laughs> a halo alkane plus two ally. How do we know? Because we just have memorized, this is the way we make alkyl lithium. So we just have to have that uh, memorized. Remember to keep numbering each picture as a defense against dropping or losing carbons. One of those common mistakes is accidentally dropping or losing a carbon. Whoops. So let's keep uh, numbering to uh, avoid that. OK, and how did we make this? Through bromination. No, just kidding. No, PBR3. Yeah, PBR3. kind of bromination, but with PBR3, not just not PBR2. Not. Yep. Uh, yeah, a PBR3 applied to what functional group? OH. All right, so the sad news is we're done. We've gotten back to the starting material over here. So that's the end of our uh, little journey here. OK, now what I just did is retrosynthesis. I think we talked about this before. Retrosynthesis is not a type of a problem. It's just a technique for solving synthesis problems. It just means a lot of the time, the best way to solve a synthesis problem is to work backwards from the product. Because there's a million things you could do to the starting material. There's a million things you could do to the starting material, so it's fruitless to just go through all the different things you could do to this. Instead, you want to look at the product and ask, how could I make this product? Because there's only one way to make this product. And then you can ask, how can I make this intermediate? And there's only one way to make that intermediate. And then you can ask, how could I make uh, this intermediate? And there's really only one way to make that. Um, and um, now we know the best way to turn a primary alcohol into this is like this. Now, the only difference between what I have and what your instructor wrote is that your instructor did not use normal reaction arrows. Instead, your instructor wrote all the arrows like this. Yeah, what's the difference between, what, what do these arrows mean? The only difference is that in these arrows, the arrow is pointing towards the starting material. This just, means, this just means an arrow that's pointing to the starting material. A normal arrow points to the product, right? A normal arrow points to the product. A retrosynthesis arrow points to the starting material. Well, we've talked about that when you're actually solving problems, even though your instructor would do it this way, you shouldn't, because this is, this is confusing for us. Why don't we just use normal arrows that point towards the products and intermediates? So that's all that the instructor was doing in that part of your notes. They were showing how we could work backwards from here uh, to figure out how we could have made that uh, in the first place. Uh, and this is all stuff you might have to put together, say, on a synthesis problem. I think, again, one of the hardest parts here would be getting the right carbon chains at this point. Uh, so by the way, what's the answer to this synthesis problem? What would be step one? Step one, step one is PBR3. Step right. two, two LI. Step two is two LI. Good. Step three is CUI. Good. And step four is that, that thing on the right. Yeah, then we add this thing to the copper lithium, right? This is something else that we figured out in our retrosynthesis, right? We figured out that before it turned into the product, the copper chain was attached to an iodine over here. And again, keep numbering all your pictures to make sure that you're not dropping carbons or losing carbons. Uh, and I guess that would be, so this is a, it's only a four step synthesis. So this would be fair game probably for the test. Thank you. Okay, um, so that would give us that. You guys showed me two examples, but they were basically both the same. They were both examples of starting with alcohols and ending up with organocuprates over here. So one reason you guys had trouble with that was maybe you just didn't know all the reactions to start with. I, maybe we haven't really learned how, what you can do with organocuprates and how you can make them. Um, okay, so we now know how to make all, um, we know how to make uh, grid yards and alkyl lithiums. And what can you do with them? Attack carbonyls, epoxides, and deprotonate things. And we also know how to make organocuprates. 
What, uh, how do you make that? Out of an alkyl lithium. So you have to make the alkyl lithium first. And what can you do with an organocuprate? Um, you can take off the functional group. And what type of mechanism? SN2. You just do an SN2 with that. You do an SN2, and it's interesting SN2 because it results in a molecule with more carbons and no functional groups. So when would you want to use an organocuprate? When you're trying to make a bigger molecule with no functional groups. Okay. Any questions? Who did I take these from? Okay, so we're done with that? I'm done with it. You guys have any more questions? Um, I have other questions with other stuff. But, um, was that, what lecture was that? Sorry? 18. You went through 18. Is there oh, anything? Wait, there was a question. This part of the CL, how it says um, reaction for priming alcohol with HI and DR, but not CL. Mm -hmm. And it says um, this step two only works with good nucleophiles, such as BR, I minus, not right. CL minus. Why is right. that? Because we thought that CL minus yeah. was a good nucleophile. So I'll erase this now? Yes. Okay. Remember that all these things I wrote here were just thought processes. This is the answer. Okay. All that work we did was to get this. Also remember that I don't have organic group rates in your handouts. Um, so you'll have to take your own notes on organic group rates. Um, which of these is good enough for SN2? Usually. So we'll last three, we'll last three these are usually good enough for SN2. You can usually do SN2 with this, but this you usually can't. Okay. This is not uh, usually good enough nucleophile for SN2. But that does not mean that these are all equally good. There must be some difference between these. So how can you compare elements as to uh, what their nucleophilicity is? Well, it depends on whether they're in the same column or the same row. I'm sorry, you were going to say something? Yeah. These are in the same column, so you want to compare them based on size. When things are in the same column, you want to compare them based on size. Um, so chloride here is the smallest. Does that make it a good nucleophile or a bad? Bad. What, what, why is it bad to be small? Because um, of steric hindrance. Yeah. What's the big obstacle to SN2? Steric hindrance. Yeah. So... Remember we've seen that one of the things that steric hindrance can come from is a solvation shell. The solvent could completely surround um, the nucleophile and get in the way. Well, who's more likely to get completely surrounded? Yeah. Somebody small. Somebody small can easily get completely surrounded, and then there's too much steric hindrance, but it would be pretty tough to completely surround bromide here, because it's just so big. Um, so this is one of the reasons that big things are better nucleophiles. Big things are better, better nucleophiles. So even though all of these are usually good enough for SN2, um, iodide and bromide are better than chloride. In fact, chloride is maybe a little bit borderline. In fact, there might even be some cases where you can't do an SN2 with chloride. I think that's what you were pointing out in the handout. Yeah. So what was the specific Several situation? One. Reaction of primary alcohols. Yeah, so here they're saying that a primary alcohol um, uh, this reaction would not give you a uh, very good yield. I wouldn't have been able to predict that out of the top of my head ahead of time. I don't know why this would be a harder SN2 than anything else. So um, that's something that I guess you would just have to memorize. Um, so again, uh, as I was saying, I gave you guys the new and revised SN2 handout with the better table. But again, I have to admit the table's not perfect. There are still some exceptional cases. I would be surprised if they tested that chloride can't do this on the test. This is not the kind of detail, I think, that would be very likely to come up on an exam. Uh, like I said, I think most test questions the table will handle. Uh, but basically, we shouldn't be too surprised that sometimes uh, chloride uh, can't do things that these guys can't because it's considerably smaller. Usually, you can use chloride for SN2, and if there's some exceptions the instructor wants you to know, you just have to memorize uh, those, uh, basically. By the way, this is uh, what we just did here was on page two of your SN2 handout. Uh, on page two of the SN2 handout, it shows you how to compare elements and decide who's the better nucleophile. Um, for example, it says, if elements are in the same column, you should compare them based on size. Uh, and then it says that when things are bigger, there are better nucleophiles because uh, it's harder to completely surround them with solvent. Um, so this is uh, one of the ideas that you can review uh, in the handout. Okay, I think that's much more likely to be tested than this fact that you can't use chloride for that particular reaction over there. You're much more likely just to have to rank things in order of nucleophilicity. So that's the more important thing to review here.